There's a curious theory that emerges whenever the ongoing Red Bull and Honda engine collaboration or a possible 2026 project become a talking point in Formula 1. The conspiracy essentially contends that Red Bull and Honda have gamed the system by getting an engine freeze agreed under false pretenses and are either reaping the rewards now or will benefit later. To buy into this though, you need to believe that Honda never really intended to leave F1 and never actually left. So settle in because it's time to go myth busting. Honda announced in late 2020 it would be quitting F1 officially at the end of 2021. But the clock hit midnight a long time ago and Honda's pretty much still in F1. The name's even officially back on the engines in 2023, something we'll come to later in this video. Red Bull's critics have not been particularly pleased to see little sign of Honda really leaving, to see a revised deal agreed so that Honda continues to maintain the engines on Red Bull's behalf anyway, to see the loss of stickers and official naming rights undone in late 2022, and to see that Red Bull and Honda might work together on a 2026 engine project as well. So what do they think has happened? When Honda's intention to quit F1 was announced, it quickly became very clear that a deal was on the cards for the two Red Bull owned teams to continue to use Honda's engines from 2022 to the end of 2025. The initial version of this deal intended for Honda to develop its 2021 engine to be compatible with a small fuel change for 2022 and operate as a contractor in 2022 as well, helping with the assembly and maintenance of the engines. A new company set up by Red Bull called Red Bull Powertrains would then take over the running of the engines in 2023 before being expanded and tasked with building an in-house engine for 2026. Red Bull knew it would not be capable of developing the Honda engine in that time though, even with a rapidly created powertrains division. There are provisions in F1's regulations that would have forced another manufacturer to supply both Red Bull Racing and Alpha Tauri once Honda left. In this case, it would be Renault, which had not long had a fractious Red Bull partnership ended. So Red Bull wanted to avoid being a customer again, knowing that Honda was working on a very good development for 2021, so its engine would probably be an outright more competitive prospect. A simpler version of the conspiracy theory peaks here. Some people believe that Red Bull knew Honda had a great engine upgrade coming, so tricked F1 into agreeing a freeze after 2021 so that Red Bull could benefit from a performance advantage over Mercedes. But others believe the deception extends further, that everything that has happened in the Red Bull Honda engine saga over the last 12 months or so is proof of an underhand approach. Red Bull supposedly tricked everybody into thinking it would be screwed over by Honda leaving it high and dry, only for Honda to stick around after all and help more than anyone expected. So actually, Red Bull's trickery guaranteed its performance, locked in a potential advantage, and gave Honda and Red Bull time to prepare for a 2026 engine with a new collaboration anyway. Basically, Honda never really intended to quit, and Red Bull never really intended to go it alone with Red Bull powertrains. At least, that's the theory. All of that is a fun idea, but it's really not the case at all. Red Bull was undeniably a winner out of how this has played out. It gained itself a safety net because Honda would still leave, but Red Bull would be able to keep using an engine that took a big step in 2021 and knew that rivals wouldn't benefit from an extra year of development in 2022 that Red Bull couldn't match. But some details have been badly misconstrued and others are just ignored or forgotten altogether. For example, several people seem to have forgotten that an engine freeze was coming to F1 in 2023 anyway. Red Bull just pushed for it to be brought forward and wanted it to kick in at the end of 2021. The hybrid era had long been too complicated and expensive, performance was converging anyway and new rules were slowly being drafted too, so everyone had agreed for a freeze in 2023. It took a few months of debate at the end of 2020 and into the start of 2021 after Red Bull's lobbying to iron out the details, but nobody was really opposed to bringing it forward by 12 months, so nobody really got tricked. There were also some things about the freeze that were not what Red Bull wanted, especially the fact that there would be no form of regulatory insurance that gave dispensation to anyone with a clear performance disadvantage to be able to develop the engine and catch up. As for Red Bull and Honda themselves, anyone who really believes this was a grand act of deception should consider the cost that this had for each party. Honda's intention to quit was legitimate because the F1 project had come at an enormous expense. We've heard it was upwards of $100 million a year. 
And in 2020, when COVID struck and Honda was struggling and the old CEO was probably panicking, there were just a few wins to show for that colossal F1 investment. As Honda needed to redirect its financial and technical resources into carbon neutral projects because the company had fallen behind its automotive rivals, F1 was an easy sacrifice to make. Thanks to all this, Honda had the embarrassment of having to publicly announce it was walking away yet again from a massively expensive and at the time ultimately unsuccessful F1 project. It then had to fund a hugely accelerated development plan to get its final F1 engine ready for 2021, not 2022 as intended, and then missed out on a ton of marketing potential with that engine because Honda wasn't around as that engine went on to help Red Bull break records and win both titles. At the same time, Ripple has spent a fortune building up its new powertrains division. The initial documents for 2021 indicate that Red Bull's parent company spent over £100 million in that year alone and the cost has undoubtedly been far greater. Neither Red Bull nor Honda would put themselves through all of that just to sneak an engine freeze through one year early. It was what was necessary at the time before things started to change. Largely because Honda got a new CEO between announcing its F1 exit in October 2020 and its actual departure date. That played a big part in Honda eventually being willing to remain on board as a contractor for longer than intended, but even that's still quite a bit different to being willing to develop an engine properly in 2022 without a freeze. Ultimately, Red Bull has ended up with a friendlier deal than expected as Honda is doing more than was initially outlined. But as easy as it is to connect the dots, there's no grand conspiracy around Honda's shifting willingness to stay involved in F1 or not. It's just another example of the manufacturer's impossibly frustrating flakiness. While we felt a lot of the chat around this needed to be debunked, there is one legitimate area of concern about how this has played out and what it means for the future. Red Bull would have preferred a much calmer and cheaper past 18 months than the one Honda inflicted, but this saga has nudged Red Bull into a direction that it hopes will help it long term, assuming Red Bull Powertrains does a good job with its first in-house F1 engine. And we reckon that Red Bull has been keen for a bit more separation between the new Powertrains business and the contracted work from Honda, based on what it wants to do in 2026. Red Bull intends to be a new manufacturer and get all the associated concessions with that, mainly more money to spend and more dyno time. It would certainly not be a surprise if Red Bull felt that backing out of powertrains, taking over the assembly and maintenance of the Honda engines from 2023 would be beneficial for the perception that RBPT is definitely a new manufacturer in 2026. So Red Bull's probably quite relieved that Honda's been keen to keep looking after the engines after all and wanted to take some branding back. Honda's sticker space has increased slightly from how it started 2022 and more significantly, the make of engine has officially been registered as Honda RBPT for 2023 after Honda initially disappeared this year. Clearly, Honda has been unable to let go of F1 in the way that everyone believed it would. But this is just mainly undoing a pretty rubbish initial agreement that sold Honda short and also reinforces the feeling that Honda really could return in 2026 properly. And that is where a real potential controversy lies. A future Red Bull Honda collaboration has been discussed and Honda is interested in an official F1 return, but it is no guarantee. Red Bull could partner with another automotive manufacturer or just go it alone, as it always said it intended, while Honda has officially registered its interest in the 2026 engine rules independently of Red Bull to keep its options open. So there is no guarantee that there will be a new Red Bull Honda engine in a few years, and that's another thing for the conspiracy theorists to keep in mind. But if Red Bull and Honda do work together for 2026, they will still attempt to be considered a new manufacturer. That will presumably be on the basis that Red Bull powertrains would be a fully fledged new combustion engine manufacturer if Honda would only work on the hybrid system as has been suggested. The idea of Red Bull and Honda getting this status, even though they've been working together for several years and would have a lot of experience, expertise and relevant technology to tap into, would not go down well with rivals at all. If there's any point of contention in Red Bull's engine situation, it's this, the specific conditions of a potential Honda comeback. So don't be fooled by a conspiracy theory around what Red Bull manoeuvred for itself in 2022, but what's still in play for 2026 and beyond may yet carry real consequences.